Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Mana Lords, episode number three in our first look at this game, really. Uh, Alright, so we did a good job setting up things for our first year. We're getting into our second year. What's the status? Well, we have three people on firewood right now. We have nobody working down here except for one hunting camp, I guess. One in each of the storehouse and granary, two in the saw pit, one logging camp, and it's January. Right now, on the global map, we still have our one province, two bandit camps to the north of us, no other bandit camps visible. Uh, first thing we're going to do in this episode is actually going to go charge after that bandit camp. So let's get right here. And we'll have those guys chase that down. We're also going to... Um, we, the big first goal is, besides getting the bandit camp, is we need to get our field plowed and sowed. So that's going to be uh, objective number one. In the meantime, we can manage... We get some of these things going as well. Looks like we have two here. We might want to build even a third one. Oh, another bandit camp. Down there, okay. Well, I don't know how... Uh, <laughs> not sure how aggressive we're going to be about all this. We are currently running. Let's not run anymore. We will be fighting soon, I, I suspect. I'm just going to plop my guys over here. Let them go. And in the meantime, we'll try to get some stuff set up in the town. So I think the farmhouse is all ready to go. Saw pit, we are trying to make up some timber and I or some planks. That is so that we can eventually, and as soon as we can really, get this wooden church. Uh, it shouldn't be long. Basically, we just need to convert some timber into planks, and we're good to go. We have one person left over right now. Um, I don't know if there's any place we'd rather them be. Oh wait, can you drag... You only WASD. Yeah, okay. So yeah, the hunting camp is, is actually not overtaking the wild animal count. Wild animal count is not declining, basically. So we aren't pushing hard enough, or... I guess we're pushing not too hard to cause that to happen. We have a lot of burgage plots that are only half finished. So, but we still have 14 space already. Oh, okay, we're about to get into the battle here. Because I should have given my orders stand our ground. It's my preference. And we are set. I like to do a tab on this. Their army balance power is plus 21. Our army balance power is plus 37. Well, anyways, we're standing our ground. Which I think is a good way to absorb the charge. And then as soon as we're into the fight, force our guys to get in there. The more, I mean, I think it is, uh, you know, each person is actually rolling in the combat against the other. You can actually go into battle and, you know, view your troops walk in the middle of the fight if you want. But, you know, if you want to roleplay it more, and I'm, I think it's really fun to do this. You just sit and encourage Roman! Have at him! Look, it's a three-headed monkey! Right behind you! Not you, men, I mean them! Such a bad. But this also, um, is time It's passing in real in the game, you know? So let's press T to get back to our town center, just to make sure everything is getting covered properly over here. I mean, as soon as that fight finishes, we do want to very quickly run over and uh, loot that village, that um, brigand tent, brigand camp. So I don't know who our one person doing construction is, but ah, okay, they just finished that one. And we have this one as well, which is on medium, then low, then very low, so I don't know, it's all... All looks fine to me, actually. We just want to make sure that when family... Oh, okay, they're down to nine, so it's basically a route. Should be a route. Hurry before any one of my men dies! Surprised that they didn't route... <laughs> route it, did not route quicker. Um, we're going to very quickly run over here to the bandit camp. I mean, we probably shouldn't run, but we'll run a little bit. Because we're going to want to take on the other bandit camp as well. Now, there's a third bandit camp. I don't think we're going to spend all the time doing that. Uh, one thing that I want to also check, and I think it's not true, is that when this one is built... Let's set up that one to very high. So I have one, which is the goat here. This, this one, I want that to get done very quickly because... Oh, it's done. Good. I want this to be... Um, a goat shed as well. So we have our goat shed, we have our goat shed, we have our chicken coop, 
and we have another chicken coop next to it. Good, very good. So I set these guys to control group one, but and this is one thing I hope they change. Double tapping control one, I mean double tapping one doesn't bring you there. Does shift one? No. Does alt one? Oh, alt one removes the. Uh, I don't. Alt one is like from the back back in the days of like. <laughs> Like the original Total Annihilation, I think, had like Alt-1 as the way you would actually move to the... Like, you didn't double tap 1, which is the convention I think everyone has grown used to at this point. Anyway, oh, minus 11% fatigue, I think that's fine. So, luckily for us, we didn't lose any people. I don't know if there's hit points or not. I'm assuming not, because we're going to just move on to the next one right away. As soon as we get that pop-up. I think we're still fine here, though. There's plenty of stuff for our construction worker to do, and everyone else is... Well, I'm pretty okay getting more fuel, because this food is in great shape. And these guys, ah, the one thing that we want to, good thing I paused right at the moment, um, but we also want to make sure that we're focusing on this area very specifically, so that we can very quickly clear away area. But this is going to go to my treasury. So we took that for ourselves, 158 regional wealth, but now we have a little bit of treasury, and that solves um, our need to ever hire mercenaries. I mean, sorry, that gives us the ability to hire mercenaries, which solves our need to ever deploy militia in a pinch. Um, so now we have the ability to, you know, if we need, we can always just hire mercenaries to solve our problems. Now we're going to move after these guys next. Still a little bit of fatigue, so let's maybe just camp up over here. I'll see if that um, is close enough that, yeah, that's probably close enough that they start gunning for us. We'll go back to standing ground, because I feel like that's a very effective way to handle situations with Spearmen. And it's January, so not February yet. I mean, the thing we're nervous about, of course, is getting back by March. March is when the fields will turn, uh, will be available for plowing and for sowing. So we, that's our, our, our condition is we have to be home by winter's end. It's very cool. I love the dynamics in this game. This whole thing where you can send your soldiers out when you don't, when they're not needed, pretty much, you know, when the time's... Times you don't need the crops. <laughs> it feels it just feels real to me that, that that would be the way it would happen. Let's go, let that guy in. It didn't help, did I? That guy's still stuck. These ding dongs. Probably not the best time to reform, but let's try to get that guy through. He did. Okay, good. We're formed. Yeah, I think we're ready for them. Again, we don't know about... I don't know about hit points. Army power pounds. I don't know how that works. We still have minus 1% on our fatigue, but... What's theirs going to be? Minus 1. Oh, and they're climbing. Even better. So they're actually climbing up to us, which means that we'll have a nice advantage here. We'll absorb the initial hit. I'll wait for things to settle. And I'll just make sure to right-click. So I don't know why. It's just... They're already engaged. I'm sure it's fine, but... 98 to our 79. So we do have the plus 25 experience, and we still have that army bal power balance, which looks like a good thing to me. I've had it before in my uh, live stream on Twitch playing this game, where one of my guys got caught both surrounded by three raiders. I don't know how it happened, but that guy was toast. We have the numerical advantage, so in theory, I probably should have spread out a little bit more so that we could surround them more. Although, if, oh yeah, see, we got a kill, and that should fold the edge around. In fact, they've already lost three people. This whole, their left, my right, is collapsing. I mean, it's their left, which is collapsing. You can see that there's some... This is why I like the defensive formation, too, because I feel like if you have somebody who's stranded, they can hold off a little bit more on their own. and give, We have... Um, I mean, they could always get lucky, I guess, but yeah, yeah they're, they're grounded. And we, uh, we really can't waste any time. So we have to run immediately to the camp. So I'll do it that way. And we'll do push forward. I don't... There's a... Uh, when you hire mercenaries, more formal military units. There's also another uh, option to spread out. And that option allows them to move a little bit faster. I don't see that option for us. So we'll just charge ahead. Get that. Meanwhile, what's going down here? What's going on down here? Not a whole lot. Like, I'm going to put this into place. I'm going to place this now. I want another hitching post over here. So we'll have a double hitching post. We'll even have a nice road, which... 
runs like that. That'll just be the, the hitching post area where anyone can pull and grab an ox if they need it. Alright, step up to times two speed again. Uh, are you guys moving? You are moving, right? Uh, some of them weren't moving. <laughs> Alright, we uh, it got resolved. Small problem there, but it looks like we're fine. Alright, now this one goes to the nearest town, I would say. We have 126, that's enough to at least hire for a month. Uh, the town will have plenty now, and then the big question is whether or not we go back to the town for a moment. I think we'll go back, um, disband, and then um, after that we can reform. I think that it works this way. I think there's kind of a trick where if you go back and dismiss and then reform, you get your fatigue back. I'm just going to check that. So we don't need our troops back yet since it's still January. We have enough time to go after the fourth and, I guess, final bandit camp that we'll need to go after. At this point, oh, and we got plenty of regional wealth at this point as well, but um, what I wanted to say is at this point, we can let the uh, the other lord, the baron, whatever his name is, go after bandit camps that arise, and I think at this point he will start to. The next thing for us is, I think very soon here we're going to get a pop-up about raiders. This is one of the game mechanics in this scenario. Okay, so we got these guys. Their fatigue is pretty low, but we can probably run them this way. They will stop running if they get to minus 75% for fatigue. So they'll just stop running on their own, but they did not in this case. I'm just going to stop, hold, and disband. And then we can see that they actually do run back to their houses. Oh, look at this. What? No, we're, we're just hunters, and we're just farmers, and we're construction people. Definitely not militia. <laughs> And our construction, everything should move a lot faster now with those guys out. And yeah, the actually the thing we should have been paying attention to is the ability to get our church going. And that is what we'll do now. So, wooden church. I think it's going to go nicely right here. And I'm going to do a little bit of optimization as well. We can put the road like this. We could curve it. I'm going to do a little bit less curvy. I think we just do that directly. And I'm also going to take off this road just for a second because it's actually overshooting on this side. And then reconnect it. There we go. So back up to speed. Um, with the amount of planks we have... We're, so this is the amount of planks that are not reserved, which means it's this already includes the... Um, this includes... 18 is how many we have left over surplus beyond the church construction. So we're in pretty good shape. I'm going to tone this down to just one. We have to be ready very soon for the uh, oncoming <laughs> harvest season. But before I do that, even though we just started to get some of this stuff going, I know. Oh, then those autosaves that always, I always think the game's crashing. Uh, let's order one, and then upgrade this. So we do have plenty of money. And we can also, like this one, we can get this one to be a orchard as well. We have the money to spend for these kind of things. That one's already an orchard. We have our two for goats. We have our two for chicken coops. Now, one of the things we're gonna need to upgrade to level two is we'll be looking for two items of food in the market. So I always like to look up here. We have berries and eggs right now. We do have two, but you know, that's kind of pretty close. We actually probably want a third coop over here, our house with the coop. Just have this be the chicken zone or something like that. Now we could do this, or we could um, subtract away and do, that seems like it's almost wasteful. What I'll probably end up doing, I mean this is almost certainly going to be housing, but we might want to rotate this. And let's see, can we, yeah, we can actually get this to be four, but now they won't have the uh, co the coupage stuff. Okay, so we're in bad shape. No matter what we do, we're not going to get exactly what we want out of this. I'll probably make this another chicken coop then. Because the extra supply of food is probably more important. I don't know, but... We may even want more goats at some point, since that's our only like sustainable 
we'll, we'll just do this. Uh, that's all our only sustain sustainable um, source of, of hides, uh, which eventually we may not need if we go to flax and end up going to cloth in that way. Anyway, before it becomes any later, I think it's now time for our guys to once again charge out. I've added some planks and some stuff. Oh, that's probably what the items that we're actually carrying. Very cool that they, you know, the people actually have those items in their inventory and they deposit them. It's automatically deposited as you go to war, basically. It's cool. I like it. Uh, we're not running, which we would like to run at least a little bit. Where is this camp? It's whew, way out in Timbuktu. Uh, okay, we'll just run here. We won't run the entire way, but let's get started at least. And then we can recover fatigue on the way after we run a little bit. But still, we're in good... I think we have good time. We're Oh, there's February. I was about to say, it's not February yet. Well, now it is. Two unassigned. Where would we like the extra person to go? I mean, maybe into timber. Because there's going to be a lot of things we're going to need timber-wise. We got a new family just in time. It's like the one person working down here in the uh, hunting camp has not been successful at catching enough animals, in my opinion. But that's fine. Uh, at some point... Well, I'll leave him on construction for now. Cause especially because we have a, a diminished... Oh, these guys have been running far too long. We're going to have them recover for a while before they actually get into the fight. <laughs> okay... So yeah, we'll get more logging camp stuff going on because uh, timber is going to be in very short supply. Once the uh, church is built, there's going to be a lot of upgrading, which from one to two takes four timber. So every upgrade is going to be four timber. It's going to be a lot of timber. It's good to see that most of these were uh, were upgraded, though. And yeah, I mean, we have two, chick two goats here. This is going to be another chicken. This could be another goat. This could be a chicken or something else. I don't know. And we have the two orchards up here. That one can be upgraded eventually, but we're already at 17. We only have 11 people. Make this control group one. See, their fatigue is very low still. So we'll stop here. It looks like they're actually already coming after us. <clears throat> we may want to pull back a little bit, honestly, to get let our fatigue catch up a little bit. Like maybe here. And we'll spread out a little bit more this time as well. So I think our fatigue is still going down. Well, maybe not when we're walking. Well, 34. I think they're still pursuing. There's also the matter that we, we have a limited amount of time, so we might have to just fight fatigued. Not great, not a great decision. I did not realize how they were still running, but I, I think we're just going to go with it this way. Twenty-two, twenty-one, twenty. Here we go, oh, here we go. Well, we're into it now. Let's see how that, how much that hurts or doesn't. Will we take our first casualty? We are spread out more, so I suspect that our, we'll have more people fighting right away. They don't have anybody in the back lines, though. We're at 68, they're at 98. Unfortunately, that 68 is with our plus 25 experience. Oh, they're also experienced. Okay. So it's really the cohesion that we didn't get up either. I wonder why we lost so much cohesion. Again, that's probably just because I ran them there too quickly. A little bit, so this was mismanagement on my part, but it looks like they lost one already. That should snowball. And we don't want to focus too much on that, of course. We're very interested in making sure nobody dies, but at Stand Your Ground, I feel like they have a good chance of surviving. Especially with one of theirs already, one of the enemy already being lost. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything more that we need to really look at over here, so let's just, let's go ahead and pay attention to the battle. 20, okay, we got him. So this is just fortuitous. We got lucky, I would say. Mismanaged, but didn't get punished for it. 
Now where's that camp? Okay, so run over here to that camp. This one will go to our personal treasury again. We do certainly have plenty of regional wealth. And then these guys have to run home immediately in order to uh, get to work. You know, basically we're forcing them to sprint, 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 only to get back and work their hands to the bone at the, the, in the fields. I mean, this is a, a game which, the pace of it does not have to be that quick. If you just enjoy, like, looking at your town and watching, and there's so much detail brought into it. Okay, so this goes to my treasury. And then we'll have these guys just run home as quickly as they can. I think we just get them here. Well, I mean, they're going to want to go back here eventually, so... Let's just right click here. And they'll run as far as they can before they're too fatigued. It's still February, so we at least accomplished what we wanted to. Plenty of money, money now for, um, but you can see the snow's melting. Plenty of money for mercenaries later. I'm surprised we didn't get the bandits pop up. Maybe it only happens in March, because technically we started the first year in March. So March is the... Uh, you know, the turning of the year in some ways, from like a game start perspective. Um, looks like a lot of things are finishing as well, which is good. Let's see how we're doing. Our people are already absolutely out of fatigue, and you can see that they stop running on their own when that happens. And we do need to start preparing for the upcoming field project. Oh yeah, we don't, we don't have very much timber at all, or yeah. I'm almost of a mind to let me put three people in this just for a second. I'm almost of a mind to uh, take everyone out of this so we remove the stall. I don't want any of my logging camp people working a stall. I want them all getting timber. You know, timber's a, we're already in uh, having a huge shortage of it. And this is with two people. I mean, I put a third on, so it's, it wasn't three before, but Another person I think is pretty natural to add is to have somebody, at least one person, whose only mission is to guide the oxen. And you might be able to run again, you can. So we'll just have you run home as quickly as possible. And they don't have to cross any streams. Technically, when we were crossing over here, they did cross a little stream. I love the looks of this game. This game is its just beautiful. And I will play games that are not beautiful, but this is still... Okay, this is the brigands, I guess, or the raiders. We will track their movement, which will just keep track of us in the bottom... Tra keep track of the objective for us in the bottom right. But look, we made it back before the uh, before March. This is very good. Basically, the moment that March ticks, we have to reassign everyone. Oh, and there it is. So, we will dis... dis uh, sorry. Stop. Disband. And we will, um, we'll do, we need a lot of, there needs to be a lot of changes. So we'll do this, take you out. One here, one here is still fine. Nobody at the forger's cup. What did you even do? Yeah, it doesn't even look like you did anything. Well, we're gonna, wherever you are, we, you know, I'll set the uh, hunting limit up to 22. And I'll let this guy stop, um, just finish whatever he's doing for a little bit. And we'll definitely take a couple of people out of here. Whatever they're doing, they just need to stop where they are. It gives us six families available, with five of them in the farmhouse right away. It's very important, very important to get this farm going ASAP. Okay. Like, I'm trying to think where else we even have people. This guy will we'll need to take him off, but I assume he's in the middle of something. What's this family doing? Waiting, fetching water. Oh, okay. If this is the case, then go work in the farm. Six families is probably good, and we still have one more. Oh, we must have just got a family. Well, if, you know, if seven families is not good enough, I don't know what is. Um, I think seven families will cover this very quickly. And that's what we need next. 
I love the mechanic too here. It's just like rotation of people, which feels. I mean, it's, it it matches my image of how the medieval cycle worked. Everyone rushes over to help with fields. I'm not sure it's actually true. It might have been more of a family-oriented thing, but like this family is just in charge of that, and the, you know it takes them longer to do. But I like the idea of of being able to rush everyone over to this project to get the the fields growing as soon as possible. And then after that, we can go back and work our other jobs. Probably no reason why we can't go 3x here. And I just want to also comment on the general trend of the series. So I think there's been a ton of Manor Lord content, Manor Lords content out there. And probably there's a lot of people who are playing it competently as well. I, I actually myself have not seen too many people playing competently, but people are learning and they'll get there. Um, and at some point I am going to just defer to their series since um, people are really dedicated to it. I'd like to redo this series and my goal has, is just I want to run at high speed. That would be great. So plowing is done and still March, that's good. I want to, if we can finish growing before like the middle of April, or if not finish growing, but finish pl planting, sowing, that would be ideal. See if that happens. Church has medium priority. What else? Oh, okay, so this one did get built. Oh, cool. Two goats. How many hides do we have? We have 12 hides. We'll engage the tannery as soon as this farm is finished. Yeah, that guy's done. And we have berries we can go pick after this. So, you know, lucky, lucky news for everyone in the fields is that once they're done sowing it, can have more people go out to different fields and pick berries. And the, actually, the wooden church is now finished. It's 96%, nearly there. 99, 100. Okay, perfect. So let's pause and free up everybody except for one. One just to manage things there. And we can now add more people back. So let's get more wood cutting going. Um, let's get two on foraging. We'll actually go ahead and we'll trim down the local wildlife population quite a bit. Let them regrow after this. But at some point that you know this these areas are just gonna become not necessary to our future growth. Um another interesting mechanic which I haven't I should have talked about this earlier is we have enough influence to technically claim another region. Uh, the way claiming another region works is that you can do it with um, you could be contested. So you while you're claiming, if somebody else comes in, you can see claim with your influence. Uh, if someone else comes with an army, they can say, I hey, know you can't claim it. We can test this, and if you can't clear their army out, you won't be able to, to claim it. Uh, but where would we want to go? I don't think that'll happen. In my experience with this, you are able to claim the first one if you claim it this quickly without having to fight off anyone. Even if we have to fight off somebody, we have the mercenaries we can buy in order to accomplish that. Uh, so the next thing for us to consider is where would we want to expand? We have uh, a rich deposit on iron. With uh, one of the one of the uh, settlement upgrades, that's an infinite supply of iron. Uh, but even then, 3,400 is just more than we need. However, there's another one up here with 3,200, another rich deposit. But this one has a clay deposit. I believe we'll want to go up here. Just to look at the other ones, we have a rich deposit of wild animals. I find that that's not as important. Wild animals become kind of a thing of the past, in my opinion. You don't, they just don't add enough value quickly enough. Uh, clay deposit also is very good. The thing we might want to get is the uh, stone deposit. That's the one. Uh, so yeah, we don't have a stone deposit yet with a rich deposit. In fact, is this the only one in the entire map? No, there's one over here as well. So we could go for this one or, I mean, if it makes sense, if we go claim the, the Z word, <laughs> Zwao, uh, then we might want to claim the one next to it. And that'll also put us in conflict with the Baron, and that's probably the point where we'd want to fight them. Okay, so anyways, why don't we go ahead and claim this region? And if they decide to, if the Baron decides to actually doesn't want us to take it, we'll hire some mercenaries to take it. Okay, so we have one, only one person left after all my efforts. I, I think we might have overdone something. Let's take one person off this and put, I think, one more person on logging. Since we only have seven timber, and again, once with the church upgraded, we can pause once again just to show that requirements are not met because we need a clothing stall. Yeah, actually, this is even more important. We need to get somebody onto the tannery. 
Where did I put everyone? I guess I'll take one person off the berries and put them there. Okay. I mean, things are... We're in great shape, though. And the fact that there are no bandit camps out there means we should not have any supplies raided. Or stolen from us, which is nice. We have a full year before the raiders come. And we can handle that either with mercenaries or by deploying... I mean, at that point, we might even have access to our <laughs> our iron deposit. And then we can actually get uh, swords, shields, well, spears and shields in our case. Another clo So a clothing stall has, has been put up. We're up to 10 timber. Plenty of oxen. So what I actually want to do is I want to dedicate an oxen to the logging camp. So that means that these guys will always have one oxen available for them. Because in my, I mean, just anecdotally, from my ex inspection of things, 90% of what you're doing is hauling timber from fallen trees. Well, maybe it's like 50%. And looks like they did not contest our claim, and we have actually taken Zawao, which did not, which can be, um, let's just call this Z-word, uh, Z-wordville. Because it's just a village right now. And technically... Oh, it's just a camp right now. And technically where we are is also just a village. But I, I called it Power Ton. Maybe a little... Ahead of schedule. <laughs> We're still just a village. But we'll get there. And actually with the church. And hopefully the two items of food. Barely... Oh, actually three even. Great. Yep, there it is. We now have our ability to do upgrades, and we have 12 timbers, so we can do three of them. I always like to do um, places with something... Oh, you don't actually have access for some reason, but you don't either. Do you? No. Maybe they haven't discovered it yet. We'll just wait a little bit longer. Is that the situation we're looking at here? Yeah, leather counts, linen counts, and yarn. So you don't have to make the actual clothes yet. That is something we can do later. We can actually get into making shoes and cloaks. But for the lower level stuff, they just essentially the people just want to make it themselves. They'll string together some leather, leather waistband or something like that. As soon as that trickles over, I know it's here. So technically it's here and I can do this because this one, this house doesn't even have a, a, a people living in it. This one has it too. They, do they have people? They do. I'll still do it. It's good. I mean, since that's, a, in my opinion, a priority place. Yeah, so you are also going to be a chicken coop just to make sure we always have food. And then you are going to be a goat shed so we always have hides, and I may make this one a goat shed as well, because I think food will be easier to accomplish when we have the wheat coming in and all that. And another thing is we're going to want eventually some place for this wheat to be processed. For that, it's a low priority, but we will want a windmill up at some point. Yeah, I think what we need right now is just uh, construction workers. So, what is our... Delimit 8... They have nailed that. Okay, so let's get uh, this one way up. This is essentially my way of turning it on and off. We'll wait a little bit for one of these guys to finish doing something. Processing goods here. Okay, let's subtract one of these guys. But he has work to do, so let's let him do his work. And we probably want another forager at some point as well. We'll do that since might as well get the berries. I mean, obviously we have plenty of berries. We're not in short supply by any means. How about those cabins? Are we now ready to upgrade? Ah, we are. And how much timber? So again, we only have enough for three. We're in short supply. We did get those three though. Yeah, now we're just timber limited. Uh, enough so that I'm going to put three people on the logging camp. And honestly, what I'd like is for one person to just be dedicated to the ox. We already have three. Well, let's order another one here.
Do we have three people here? We have two. Now we really just want more families, don't we? Lots of upgrading, lots of construction to do, but you know, we need lots of timber to support our our expanding. Okay, is this guy done? Yeah, good. So get that guy cleared off. He can do construction now. Pretty happy with things, how things have gone, though. I see that we're, you know, we're pretty much over on time for this episode. I think it's gone very well, though. I mean, I'm really loving this game, and... We've only gone a year and a half in three episodes, but I think that's gone a lot faster than a lot of other playthroughs. Um, I think that this game probably does need to be played at higher speed if you're not stopping and smelling the roses, which we probably should do more of anyway. Just watching the foot traffic here is so cool. This game just really delivers when it comes to that aspect. Don't be shy, good sirs and ladies. We're up to 10 timber, which means we can uh, get some more upgrades going. Although it appears that a lot of our upgrades are <laughs> pending anyway. Construction is a little bit behind. I think I will add one person as a dedicated stable stable handler. So at least we still have enough space for anybody else to come and move in. And look at that. Settlement level has increased. Power ton is still a village. <laughs> but I said that I may want to get uh, the rye cultivation. Of course, that was one of the things we were targeting. Uh, just to, I mean, I guess I should show it, but um, like this field is 42%, it's wheat. We'll do crop rotation so we can see what the next one would be. We'll probably leave it fallow and do a separate field instead. By the way, that reminds me, I haven't dedicated to where we're doing this in a while, but I want to make sure that we're covering this area enough so that we cut down those trees that's all for next year, so we have plenty of time to cut them down. Yeah, what I was going to say about that is we have this extra point, and we can see how good the, the yield is going to be, the fertility. If I wanted to, I can go over to this and look at... Well, we can't do it unless I activate rye. We can't see what the rye is, but the rye is going to be much higher. Um, it, In my experience, it's always like... What, like 20% higher than the wheat. And usually has higher um, higher fertility everywhere. Just higher general fertility. So it's, uh, it's more robust, I guess. But there are, are other interesting things to do. Like we can get the beekeeping for, for bees for getting honey. It's di that'll diversify our, uh, our available foods. Getting charcoal is interesting because it turns our firewood into 2x firewood effectively. Uh, especially because charcoal will be needed for blacksmiths, all these other things. We're going to need fuel, including our communal ovens where we're going to want to bake our bread. I'm actually not going to decide on this. I mean, a safe, very safe option is just to go with rye cultivation and then follow that up with the next policy being irrigation so that we are very, very safe on food. But I'll think about it off camera and we'll come back and maybe do one more episode on this before I call this series to a close. I feel like it's already been a successful look at manor lords and i'm sure i've said this but i'm gonna say it again this game is already fantastic i'm very much enjoying it can't wait to come back and play some more until then thanks for watching and take care